Oh. All right. We just got Toha here working a flirt pole with uh, my other trainer, uh, Mariana. And uh, so, you know, we just kind of get control of that dog, working around a distraction that he likes a lot, you know, by, by building it up. So we worked at a little lower levels, and then as he does good, hey, we're going to use that flirt pole as a payment for him. Once he has impulse control, if it's a sit, eye contact, boom, and he's got very good control on a break, I'll let him go get it under those circumstances, but not with him making his own decisions. So we'll see if you recall, recall off of that, come to me, do some heel and sit, stable, and I get that eye contact, and now we're gonna pay him for that. So, and I wanna do it really quickly when I got that good fundamental obedience. That's gonna allow that dog to say, hey, the faster I do this, the faster I get the mother of all paychecks over here faster snappy obedience and the dog is more than happy to do it to be a hard thing to do pull him off that drive it shows he's got a lot of prey drive so when he does that i know we got a dog that's about ready to do you know some good focused work on heels stuff like that he's ready to work for that object have my trainer start to chirp up slightly just build him up slowly not go all crazy on me on the distractions good boy oh that's good heel what a good boy good good heel what a good boy all right that's a good bumper Toma. Toma. good boy all right and now she's popping off low level distractions over there. Keep going. Yeah, just keep going low level. Good sit. Good boy. Every time we get eye contact and even balance energy, oh, good. I want to mark it with G O O D. I want him to know hey, buddy, you're doing a good job. Keep doing what you're doing. Good boy. Sick of boy. My B R A K allows him to know hey, you can release out of this. And uh, I, want to, I want that to be it. But I'm going to want that prey to stop. That's your rabbit, your squirrel. So go ahead, stop right now. And he's going to be anticipating a move. His impulse is going to weaken a little bit here, but if I get that eye contact, B R E A K, my prey comes alive. Break. And we got great timing. So now that dog's sick, it's going to get snappier on you because what do we get? We get the rabbit, we get the pursuit. You don't want him to get it right away all the time because then you can build out frustration. Go ahead, pay him on the next one though. He's getting a little tired. So go ahead and make it, yeah, go ahead a little closer side to side. There you go. All right, after a couple good ones, all right? All right, don't be too easy on it. You know, make him work for it. He shouldn't be typewriting. So maintaining good tension on it, start him off on the back tie where you can do targeting work. He can only hit the wrap, respect your hands, know the boundaries there. And after that, you can get the flirt pull work. That way he doesn't get frustrated, come at you, redirect at the pull or your hands. Um, you know, and you get that at the right time that he's you know on that edge of you know frustration and you know building a little bit longer than what he had before it's probably a prime time to satisfy that prey drive he gets that kill that's where he's shaking and tugging like a madman and once he feels that you know there's no more fight and that prey is dead in his mouth you see those ears pinned back on that victory lap there's no more confidence in that and now you're using that to uh, melt away your environment because he's so focused on that toy you know while building him up and under fundamental obedience so we'll do that one more time on a page. All right, come on. Go dead. Come on, out. Come on. Good boy, come. Come, come. Good boy, buddy. Good. You doing a recall? Dogs have heel. Good. Have a natural uh, propensity. You want to be in front of you, so break your body language down. Turn the sideways if you want to kind of use that to coerce your dog, especially when you have a uh, lack of verbal communication with, you know, airplanes and stuff like that. Crouch down to the side. Toha, come. Good boy, yeah! Now, facing him direct on, that's not a very inviting body language. You probably wouldn't come hug me at the park if I was some stranger. I was like, hey, buddy. You know, so we ain't gonna do that with the dog either. We wanna be inviting. Toha, come. Good boy, where's a good boy? 
Later on, you can advance it, stand tall, this and that, and you know, after you got that good rapport. Come, good. He goes outside, arms reach distance of me. I'm gonna bring him back. Come, come, good boy. Good boy. I was sick of boy. Good. You know, arms reach distance, 360 circle is that recall. So he can stand, he can sit. I don't really care, but stay in my bubble, check in with me 51%, and, uh, and stay in obedience command. You can pay attention to your environment, but keep that accountability for what she's doing right now. So I still gotta give BRK, he offered me to sit, say good boy. You know, freak, oh, that's good boy, yeah! Pay him in place a lot of times in the beginning, that way you can add value to the stability of this. Not only that, this is the end of your recall. This is a, this is a heel position. Good boy, yo, good boy! You know, those are your most important commands to get control of your dog in emergent situations. So you don't want to, um, you know, not have a good paycheck, a good relationship with your dog right here. It should be the best thing ever. So if it's physical, verbal praise, if it's, you know, you know, bite tug, if it's food for that particular dog, although I want it graduated, you know, to healthier. If I can get prey drive working for the ball tug, yes. Verbal, physical, great, you know, and that dog will love to work. Go ahead, and we're gonna give him the bite quickly on this one because he's really tired, he's had a good amount of reps. So we don't wanna get past that point where he gets disinterested. You should not leave this hanging around the house and where he has access to it all the time. The prey has value when it's alive and fighting. It means nothing when it's dead and you devalue it if you leave it around. So he ain't fighting work for it, he drop it. You wanna kinda of avoid those situations by this tension, you know. But if he does ever drop, boom, it goes away. And guess what? You'll be thinking about, oh shit, I have to pay more attention. I just gotta focus and I gotta stay on top of that. Next time he comes out, he's tracking that, you know, that object way harder. Gonna work for it way more. Good.